chúng tôi hân hạnh được trình chiếu một trong những bài thuyết giảng sâu sắc với tựa đề Truyện Cắm Cười, phần 3 của 3 phần trên giữa thầy và trò, được giảng bằng tiếng Anh và Âu Lạc, còn được biết là tiếng Việt, vào ngày 12 tháng 3 năm 1994 tại California, Hoa Kỳ. There's another story here. <laughs> I read all these already. I want to select, you know, what's the best one. That's why all these I have to cross which one, you know, is more funny and more understandable for the whole, for the mass, you know. So there's another one. There is a, a couple, you know. Uh, the wife is uh, very, very terrible, you know what I mean? Like a domineering and muscular, <laughs> strong, <laughs> silent, oh, not silent type. <laughs> yeah. And uh, this man is his near-death experience, okay? <laughs> he just nearly breathed his last, right? Anyhow, and the doctor, you know, stepped out from his room and called the wife to his side, to the doctor's side, and talked very, you know, kind of whispering like in her ear, say, well, I don't think he can make it. His time is up. You have to be courageous and accept it. He's going to breathe his last very soon. All right. And then <laughs> the husband is near death, but he still, you know, can hear it. And he protested, you know. He tried very hard to... <laughs> to... Uh, uh, to lean toward the doctors and the wife's side and said to them, No, no, I am not dead yet. I still can speak, you see. So the wife said to him, Shh, you know better than the doctor? <laughs> <laughs> Got it? <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> Die Deutsche. <lacht> ist nicht richtig, wichtig? <lacht> nicht komisch, ja? <lacht> es gibt so viele, aber du willst es noch hören? Ah, ja. Otherwise, we have something more serious for you. Like, how to be Buddha. <lacht> Immediately. Huh? Okay, so I think we stop right here, all right? Because there are so many, you know. Many. Maybe another time, huh? I can't read the whole book. I can, but I mean, too much, you won't digest it. Huh? What do you think? Yeah. Yes or no? Yes. All right, good. So now, <clears throat> let's change our face expression <laughs> and take on a serious, grave outlook <laughs> in order to <laughs> be received into nirvana. Later. <laughs> oh, this is too serious. <laughs> I think I die. That's <laughs> so long. Oh. Huh? Tell another joke? Tell another joke? <laughs> John, you come here to joke? <laughs> I thought you come here to enlighten yourself. <laughs> huh? Really? Maybe I find another joke, okay? okay? If I don't find a better one. Oh, look at that. It's so serious. Aging and all that. How can I live? Aging, Tao Te Ching. No Tao Te Ching. And, uh, you know, butterfly dream, you know. <laughs> who am I? You know, I am who? <laughs> <laughs> this is also cute, you know. And many stories who are kind of parable, eh, reminding us about life and all the funny things in life. Hmm? For example, there's one story about a dog who can catch the mice. Eh? Uh, this is book is a collection of of the joke of the saints. This is a saint one. You know, 
before we heard the non-saint story. <laughs> Now we heard the saint story, saint joke, a joke of the saints. A little bit dry, but <laughs> well, that's what people expect of the saints, you know. I always talk about big uh, philosophy and many parable, you know, of the cosmos and the micro crossmod and macro crossmod and macro roni. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so the saint can never, you know, laugh <laughs> in the public. Maybe he can laugh alone. <laughs> maybe the saint just buy this kind of book, you know, laughing book, and then sit in his bathroom and <laughs> and read alone, you know. <clears throat> and when he come outside, he say, <clears throat> emptiness <clears throat> is reality. Reality is emptiness. <laughs> so he is one of those kind. Okay, after the saint has sat in his bathroom and laughed his heart out, he come out and talk these kind of things. Okay, now, <laughs> well, if you don't tell everybody else, you know, I will continue to read jokes for you <laughs> later. Okay, <clears throat> this story is about a dog who can catch mice. Now we heard that. <clears throat> Now we heard that uh, <laughs> only cats will catch mice. <laughs> How come the dog will catch mice? <laughs> Who knows? Please raise your hand. <laughs> Now you don't laugh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're not allowed to laugh in such a serious uh, congregation. If you have the least education, you don't laugh like that. <laughs> Who knows why the dog can catch the mice? No? How come? Are you supposed to be enlightened? <laughs> okay. There was a country in China a long time ago. We call it. Qi uh, Dynasty. Yes, there was a person who can read the palms of the dogs. <laughs> On the other word, he's a dog palmist. <laughs> okay, now his neighbor, you know. Heard of his talent, <laughs> so <laughs> so ask him. You know, the dog promised to go and buy a dog for them, so that they can catch the mice. Okay. One year passed by. Then the dog promised. Eventually, bought a dog, you know, and uh, brought it to the neighbor, and say. Oh, this is German Berge, yeah. <laughs> very good. Number one dog. Right. So the le the neighbor thanked him, and kept the dog. Many years passed, and the neighbor people never saw the dog catch any mice, <laughs> any mouse at all. Not even the hair of the mouse. <laughs> Not even a look, you know, at the mouse. <laughs> so they went to the dog, Palmis, and asked him whether he has read the wrong palms. <laughs> <laughs> Or whether the dog is really German Berge, <coughs> Berge, or huh, German Shepherd. Or dog foot, I mean sheep, <laughs> or is that the bacon, <laughs> bacon cherry, right? So the dog palm is a no, 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 no. It's definitely hundred twenty percent German Shepherd, right? This dog is zero good, muy bien, huh? Ah, 
But you must know this dog is trained to catch sheep. Eh? <laughs> uh, I'll say antelope, an antelope, etc. Eh? He is not born to catch mice. Eh? <sighs> then the neighbors say, then what shall we do? We just want a dog who catch mice, and we told you. And so the pummy said, don't worry. You just, um, how say, bind him, right? Bind him in one corner, and don't let him eat anything. Then any mice pass by. <laughs> any mouse pass by, he surely catch it. <laughs> and then, yes, after that, you know, the dog began to catch mouse. And then afterward, even they let him free, he also catch mice, well, because it's a habit. This is a similar story about human, yeah? We are normally from heaven. We had everything that we could want or not want. And we are almighty, we are powerful and glorious. Now we come here in this physical world and we are bound in this physical prison, you know, a small room. Some are bigger room, but <laughs> still, it's <laughs> my room is very small. <laughs> well, well, we are practitioners; we can only talk from personal experience. <laughs> Therefore, you know, we catch mice. <laughs> the mice in this world are money, fame, name, profit, competition. You know, fighting, bickering, bittering. Black biting <laughs> among each other. These are our mice. And pitifully, we enjoy it because we have been bound in this physical chain and then we know nothing else. We forgot our origin. Yeah? That's the way we live our life. Well, it's not a dog life, but <laughs> it's just a parable, you know what I mean? Well, some, some people do live really a people so called dog, dog life because it's really miserable. And we work sometimes very hard. Some people work 18 hours sometimes if they have a lot of children or they have a lot of debt to pay or they had a kind of maybe sickness or illness that suddenly left them bankrupt, you know? So they have to work hard and hard day and night just to pay back for their two meals or three meals a day and some clothes to cover their body. That's it because we have really forgotten our real self, all right? Yeah. Mm. It's very difficult to remember, but you do remember now, huh? Yeah. A little bit, huh? Yeah. One by one, huh? Slowly, huh? You do? Yeah. Yes, yes, it takes time, it takes time. Because now to stop the dog catching mice is very difficult. <laughs> Before he won't do it, but now he won't stop. Yeah, everything is like a habit. So I think we should uh, always remember, yeah, you know, in the midst of midst of all this suffering and confusion, we should always remember our own real, I would say, origin. So never always give in to the negative. Uh, I mean, power of this world, who always want us to think that we are nothing, and we are sinful that we can never be anything, that we can never do anything, that we can never want anything more than just a few morsels of food and a few, I'll say, pieces of cloth every day, right? So this is very good. I have nothing to say anymore because the story is very clear, all right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe there's another story here, very nice. Mm. I'm not a woman of uh, a lot of words, <laughs> so whenever I can save it, <laughs> I make it short. <laughs> <coughs> this story is called Flute Playing. No? Playing flute? Yes. There's a king of uh, the Qi dynasty in China. There was, yeah, a long time ago. And then this king loved to hear the sound of the flute. He loves it. Therefore, 
every time he want to hear the, the, the sound of the flute, yeah, music from flute, he would take about 300 persons, you know, to come into his court and play the flute for him. 300 persons is like orchestra of flute. <laughs> In this uh, 300 person, there was a person, his name is Guo. He doesn't know how to play flute, but he just mix in with the 300 person. So <laughs> nobody ever know that he doesn't play anything. So like this, <laughs> he earned his living. <laughs> After this uh, uh, king died, another king succeeded him. You know, but this king also loved to hear flute uh, music, but then he loved to hear individually, <laughs> one by one. <laughs> so at that time, Mr. Guo just disappeared. <laughs> you know that? Yes. Hmm. So similarly. <laughs> We would like to remind us <laughs> that even though we are plenty people, but uh, we should come here with the same purpose, to play the flute of heaven. <laughs> if who happened to <laughs> not to play the flute, <laughs> it's all right, we don't discriminate. But then, you know, one day you feel trouble. Hmm? So when we come for group meditation, we should come only for that purpose. Then we also get benefit right away and in the long run. You know what I mean? And then we know we know what we're doing and, and benefit us forever and ever. Yeah. Otherwise, that, that's why many people sometimes they come for initiation. You know what I mean? Because uh, we don't have any condition on them. You know, not to swear or anything like that. So they all come for initiation, but after a while, you know, when it comes to individual confrontation with perhaps themselves or with the trials and tribulations that the Lord happened to uh, set before him or her, then they fly out of the window. <laughs> That's why we can only know after a long time who is who, right? And after many tests and many self, I would say uh, self uh, examination, right? <laughs> so I don't say anything, uh, and uh, fellow initiates also don't say anything. But some people just skip out, <laughs> right? They just find their way out, <laughs> and it's okay. We wish them luck, right? Yeah. No problem. No problem. We don't need one more person who don't play the flute. <laughs> That's why the practitioner of Kuan Yin Method should be honest to him or herself, right? We know what we do or what we don't, hmm? because we still have the God within ourselves, and we know whether we do it sincerely or not, right? Okay, I guess uh, it's time. <laughs> Any question concerning the jokes? <laughs> My God! <laughs> Big people are funny. Huh? They laugh at anything. <laughs> we small people don't understand. Huh? <laughs> oh, it's so boring. <laughs> what are they doing, right? <laughs> Gathering here together in the cold and then just laugh together and for nothing. Huh? <laughs> at home we can watch TV. Huh? Right? Watch football <laughs> or watch, uh, what's the name? Popeye cartoon. <laughs> and here, what they're doing, they're watching each other. <laughs> so boring. Okay. All right, sweethearts. <laughs> Sweetheart, honey, sugar pie. <laughs> we go to the kitchen. Huh? If you don't have any question, then that's it, huh? <laughs> Can I have some privacy at all? <laughs> uh, 
All right. What else can I do for you? Every story has an end. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> oh, so cute. All right, one more joke. Oh, does she? They took it away. Uh, there are many, but uh, I don't know which one really. Okay, here's another story about a child who came home, you know, and cried all his heart out. And his father asked him, What's wrong? What is it? He came home from school, you know. And the child said, uh, <laughs> The teacher just said, I have to stay in this class one more year. Uh, so the father said, but why? Oh, all right. If, if you, you, you are so unintelligent, this is your fault, uh, you shouldn't have to cry about it. Mm. Uh, and, then the <laughs> and then the child said, no, 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 I think the teacher don't like me. That's why he always tries to give me a very terrible question that I can never answer. So, and... Uh, <laughs> And the father, you know, just say, okay, let, let me see, let me see. So he took him, his child, to the teacher and uh, asked him what is the, the truth, right? And the teacher said, no, no, really, I really try to help him, but he's so stupid there. <laughs> I cannot help him, you know, you know. And now, uh, uh, you, you see, you see, I just, I just asked him something very simple. And then you will know that I am really fair to him, that he really has to stay one more year in this class, you know? So the father said, all right, ask him. Mm. And then so the, the teacher asked the question, hey, um, idiot number four, <laughs> um, do you know if uh, Abraham Lincoln is still alive or dead? The President Lincoln, right? Lincoln, not Clinton, no. Clinton, no. Lincoln, right? Is that right? Yeah. Abraham Lincoln, President, is he still alive or dead? And then uh, idiot number four cannot answer. He just stood there like an idiot. <laughs> so, so, and then the teacher said, You see, you see, I have tried very, my best to help him. So simple a question and he couldn't answer. So his father said, well, well, you can't blame him, you know, because our family is very poor and, and we don't like newspaper. We don't read every day. We don't know who's dying and who's, <laughs> who's dying and who's living every day. <laughs> Even I don't know myself. <laughs> okay, honey. <laughs> uh, let's go and eat something. Maybe next time, okay? Maybe next time I say too much. <laughs> Tomorrow is morning. I I cannot wake up in the morning. <laughs> Tonight, uh, forget it. <laughs> oh, must be very nice here in the daytime, right? Yes, okay. Thank you, come on.